I'm very I'm pleased this meeting's being held. I'm really pleased to be here. <laughs> it's great to uh, to be at the NSF uh, or National Science Board uh, meeting room and to be talking with such an illustrious group who might actually make a good influence uh, in change. I'm also proud to represent the Human Computer Interaction Lab at the University of Maryland uh, and invite you to join our 31st annual symposium coming up on May 29th. Um, the, uh, we were asked, it was actually Passover, and so it was very appropriate that you ask four questions for us here, uh, which is very traditional in that, uh, in that environment. And so uh, I did give four uh, short answers, uh, which was, uh, who am I? And I used the phrase, call me trim tab. So now that requires uh, probably the rest of my six minutes. How many people know what a trim tab is? What's a trim tab? On a boat, it's bow down. It keeps the bow down. All right, that's one function. Uh, I, actually, there's, it's, it's in boats and planes, but it's a control surface that allows you to manipulate a larger uh, vehicle. So if you're going to turn a rudder on an aircraft carrier, the rudder itself may, weighs many tons. It's not easy to turn that rudder, okay? On the edge of the rudder is a two-inch or so strip of metal. If you turn that two inches of metal, it will then turn the rudder, which will then turn the whole aircraft carrier, okay? So trim tab is a metaphor for small groups like this one having a large impact. And that's what I'm really after. Now, the phrase, call me trim tab, I was pleased to discover. When you say, who am I? I say, call me trim tab. That is the phrase on one of my heroes, Buckminster Fuller's tombstone. Okay, so that was just a wonderful confluence to discover that. Uh, uh, and so, so I was looking for an image of Trimtab, and what came up was Buckminster Fuller's <laughs> Tombstone. So um, the, the point, I think, is we are in a very, we're a small group here whose goal is to produce a large change. George Strawn opened by saying very strongly that everywhere he goes, people are sympathetic to visualization. I'm pleased that's your experience, and I hope it continues, but it's not mine. And my experience is we are still surrounded by a large number of people who are skeptical about this technology and these tools, and we have a large job ahead of us of convincing people. This is especially severe when we deal with the uh, confluence of interactive systems and statistical methods. When I attend the data mining conference or read their proceedings, it's tragic to me that that conference has gone from an early days when visualization was part of it to being totally you know, statistically oriented. And that increasing number of communities see, visual, see the big data and data science initiative as being statistical in orientation. Yet, the President's White, the White House uh, press release uh, two years ago at the end of March 20 in 2012, used visualization five times in that talk, uh, but data mining is not mentioned once, okay? And so we have a long way to go. There are people in this room and beyond who understand the potency of visualization, but we have not yet succeeded. So I want to encourage all of you to join that. Okay, so the goal is promoting interactive information visualization. My challenges are how do we do evaluations? as Cuddy Borner asked on the phone or John Swabish uh, asked about, you know, N of six. Well, N of six may be terrific. If it's six people working over three months intensely with a particular tool, their experience may be valuable. And so we need to develop new strategies. The old methods of large numbers of subjects for short periods of time just don't work for cognitive deep analyses. And so we are at the forefront of developing new methods. Dissemination is my challenge increased recognition for info viz as opposed to statistics. And I'm very much in favor of integrating statistics and visualization, reminding people here in the wonderful work Ian Witten and Frank, their book repeatedly says, exaggerated reports appear of the secrets that can be uncovered by setting learning algorithms loose on oceans of data. And that's what I see as the large commentary and often in the press. Uh, and Attempting to bring statistical principles to bear on massive data may yield results that are not useful or at best or harmful at worst, from the recent National Academy of Sciences report uh, on frontiers of massive data analysis. So we have a mindset that needs changing. It's not just that we have to shift, our cha shift people's attention in favor of us, but we have to rectify the problem that's out there. 
On a positive side, of course, uh, John Tukey 50 years ago, we're making John Tukey an honest man these days to say that uh, computer graphics uh, have the great potentiality for doing analysis. And again, in that recent National Academies report, which I must say I was very pleased to be able to intervene and help uh, guide them towards this, that visualization is a critical component. All right, so that's where it's at. My own effort, some of you may know, 20 years ago, it's actually, we did Spotfire. Spotfire has matured, become a leading tool. It grew from a startup led by Chris Olberg. I was pleased to be on the board of directors for five years. And after 10 years, it was grew to 200 people and was acquired by TIBCO. Remains, I would say, the premier tool, although Tableau is certainly the most visible tool. Uh, pleased to see uh, Tree Maps and Bernice's <laughs> uh, talk, but certainly their 25-year history has also been a great pleasure for me to see. Recently, our work on networks and so on have also gone forward. Here's networks within Spotfire. And that's the kind of visualization workspace I want to see. Um, some of you know from this little mantra. Uh, and our recent work about uh, temporal event sequences takes us to event flow, which I'd be glad to talk about if I have more time. But the capacity to take clutter like this and turn it into a meaningful result like this one uh, for Children's Hospital was one of the satisfactions. And I thank you for the time. And I invite you to join us at our next symposium on May 29th. Thank you for.